Hey, Jonathan here. In this video, I'm going to go over the top six tool types for data analysis or data science. If you're new to this channel and you're keen to learn the latest tips, tricks, and tools for working more effectively with data, please hit the subscribe button for weekly videos. Now, this is off the back of a YouTube live video I put together a few days ago, um, covering basically the top tools uh, for data analysis or data science. So if you want to check that out, you can um, <clears throat> click on a link that I'll pop in the description below. So this is really going to be a bit of a summarization of that other talk, going a little bit high level to go over the categories of tools as opposed to the actual tools themselves. <clears throat> and this is useful so that you can start to get an idea of well, you don't necessarily need to learn like every single one of these tools, but having an idea of where these different types of tools come in handy will help you to more effectively pick the right kind of tool for the problem that you are trying to solve. So I'm going to try and get over everything in about 10 minutes, which means I have less than two minutes to talk about each of these, which I could probably spend hours talking about on each one of these. So this is uh, going to be a bit of a stretch, but let's see how we go. So first up on the list, we have spreadsheets. Now the top two kind of spreadsheet tools are probably Excel and Google Sheets. Now what are spreadsheets typically good for? Spreadsheets are <clears throat> uh, a nice, easy way to kind of view your data. Um, they're accessible to a lot of people. They're highly available. Um, and what they're not so good for is things like data preparation. Um, they are good for things, uh, they're probably the most practical, accessible way to do things like data collection, even though that data collection is technically better done in something like a database. Uh, a database still needs an interface to get the data into it. And this is where spreadsheets are really handy because a lot of the, out of all the different tools that I listed earlier, um, spreadsheets are sort of the only one where you can start entering data straight away uh, without having to also add another interface on top of it. So Excel actually turns out is a bit more than just a spreadsheet because it has some other tools as well, such as Power Query, which is actually a bit of a data wrangling tool, which is useful for a lot of things. Um, <clears throat> so, but that's not, uh, that's actually technically not a spreadsheet function. Power Query is very powerful. I got lots of videos on that, so definitely check that out. Um, Google Sheets is interesting because it's actually much better than Excel at data collection because of its centralized nature. Um, and there's a whole bunch of other reasons as well that it's, it's a lot better for that, like Google Forms, different things like that. Uh, but anyway, moving on. The next on our list, we have databases. Now, what a lot of people don't realize is that you actually have several different types of databases. So um, the high level kind of categories of databases, you've got relational, column, um, document, and graph. Now, when most people talk about databases, including myself, like probably 90% of the time, what you're going to be referring to is something called a relational database. So these are like your Microsoft Access, SQL Server, Oracle, uh, different things like that. <clears throat> now, the important thing to keep in mind here is that Although a lot of people talk about databases for analysis, databases are typically not very good for analysis at all. Now, when you're going into like column databases, column databases are actually built for analysis. Now, relational databases are typically built for transactions and storage, right? So really, when you're learning about databases from a data and analyst perspective, Really, what you're mostly concerned about is just being able to um, write queries to extract the data uh, and make it small enough to get into your data analysis tools. So databases themselves tend not to be um, analysis, uh, analysis tools themselves. So um, again, lots of different little options there. Moving on. Okay, now we have self-service data visualization tools. Uh, and it's important here to emphasize the self-service part of these as well. So <clears throat> these tools here are actually designed for even non-data analysts, uh, non-technical people to be able to get in 
and visualize their data and produce the data visualizations very, very quickly and easily. So I would say that a lot of these tools, they're actually even much, much easier than using Excel. And a lot of people don't realize this. They think that, okay, well, these are some additional skills that you kind of need to learn. It's, it's kind of not really the case actually, right? Um, <clears throat> now, some of the kind of shortfalls of this is, you know, why would you still use a spreadsheet if these kind of tools are easier? Um, a lot of these do come with license costs, uh, power, BI and click sense, you can download and start using these for free, but then you can't actually share any of your work. And this is where uh, these companies make their money when you want to start actually sharing your results. Um, now, the biggest of these self-service visual data visualization tools is Tableau. Um, and that's basically because they kind of started self-service data visualization. So nearly 10 years back or something like that, um, they came out with the first self-service data visualization tool, which kind of really revolutionized the market. Uh, before that, you had ClickView, not ClickSense, uh, which still required developers to develop the dashboards, which then people could then view. Um, now, a lot of the prices have come down because of AWS QuickSight, um, but Tableau is still relatively expensive. And so I would say that uh, um, out of these, Power BI, I think, is, is actually... Um, one of the better options here. And if you want the details on that, again, if you go back to my other video, then I talk a little bit more about that as well. All right, moving on. <clears throat> Programming languages. So the kind of two kind of key languages for uh, data, an, uh, data analytics and data science is R and Python. So um, now prior to this, you'd have other tools like MATLAB, Ah, SAS, SPSS, um, and these type of different tools for working with data. Uh, but the problem with these is that they're very, very expensive. And so uh, a lot of organizations are starting to realize that, um, well, R and Python have actually been around for quite a long time now. And so it's kind of got up to the stage where you can use these free open source tools um, and they're starting to get commercial support from players like Microsoft and um, our studio and different companies like that. So um, companies are actually starting to phase out some of the other tools that I mentioned. So R and Python are kind of the two kind of key languages for basically doing all kinds of different operations. If you're getting, um, if you're just doing da data analysis, you can kind of use uh, kind of lots of different tools. But if you're getting into data science, I think you kind of really need to learn one of these two languages here. <clears throat> Okay, so again, I've got quite a few courses uh, and um, videos on R, so you can check those out. I have a video comparing R and Python as well, so you can check that out as well. Okay, moving on to big data tools. Now, you keep on hearing about big data all the time these days. But what is kind of big data exactly? I mean, a lot of, uh, a lot of videos and posts and everything, writing about big data basically just talks about how it's really, really big and you've got lots of it and how um, it's really important and everything. <clears throat> um, but to be honest, a lot of analysts aren't actually working with big data at all. And, you know, there's a kind of a few definitions of big data, but personally, the one that I find most useful is basically big data is data which is too big to process or store on a single computer. Uh, and because of that, you need to put it onto multiple computers and have all of those computers sort of work like they're one computer. And this is kind of the area of distributed computing. And so that's where you have things like Hadoop, you have Spark, um, uh, you have data lakes, which are working across kind of clustered storage. And <clears throat> Uh, the thing here is really that the data is too big to fit on a single computer. Now, these days, though, the thing to keep in mind is that even single computers have a lot of capacity and a lot of storage and processing power. So even just using something like R on, you know, like a fairly standard laptop, I can maybe load up 10 million records of data. And so, you know, if you've only been using Excel or something like that, that might seem like a lot of data, but actually uh, that's not because you can actually uh, just run that off a laptop. If you wanted to get into, say, hundreds of millions of records, 
you could basically get a single computer with a memory upgrade and you could start using those things without necessarily having to go into some of these big data technologies. But again, some of these technologies exist because a lot of the data that um, takes up a lot of storage are things like videos and images and videos in particular take up a lot of storage, which is one of the things that kind of tends to necessitate uh, some of these big data solutions. Okay. And finally, we're talking about the different cloud platforms. Now, to be honest, when you talk about cloud, pretty much anything on the internet is kind of like a cloud-based solution because a cloud-based solution is anything which is not like software running locally on your computer or smartphone or whatever is cloud. So <clears throat> cloud is a bit of a fun, funny term that everybody chucks around a lot. Uh, when I'm talking about cloud, I tend to be actually talking about one of the three big cloud uh, providers. Um, and, and these are more like, uh, uh, these are more like IT infrastructure providers, sort of, right? So, <clears throat> And one of the reasons this is important, when you start getting into things like big data um, and you need multiple computers to be able to host your big data solutions, uh, then you, you start to need to get a lot of um, IT infrastructure. Now, even if you're not dealing with big data, but you're just setting up a database, well, you want that database to be consolidated and centralized um, so that you can get all your data uh, in one place to work with. And all of that needs IT infrastructure, needs servers. Now, these days, for the vast majority of situations, a cloud provider like AWS, Microsoft Azure, or Google Cloud um, is going to be probably your best solution for getting that set up. You can get set up in minutes. You can get started with, say, just spending a few cents to get something up and running. You can scale it up, you can scale it down when you don't need it. Um, if it was just for a quick test or a project, you can turn it on and you can turn it off and then you're not paying for anything anymore. So this is why these services are incredibly valuable. Uh, and anybody who needs to set up some IT infrastructure uh, for these kind of things should definitely be looking at the cloud players. Now, there's a, it's a lot more to it than that because uh, over time, these players have built out massive services. Um, where they've componentized like all of the uh, kind of different functions and stuff that you'd want to do. If you're getting into data analytics or data science, um, there's kind of all these different databases that you could use. There's also different machine learning libraries and everything like that that you can tap into, which you can just kind of run on the cloud. And this works well if you can't, say, just run it on a local machine or something, then cloud has a ton of great options for that. Uh, but anyway, this is just a really, really quick summary of some of the other stuff that I've been talking about. So if you want to find out more about me and some of the stuff I'm doing, you can visit my website at www.datastrategywithjonathan.com. I have got some free training that you can get access to there. Uh, I've got a blog over there as well. Also, if you like this video, please leave a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel and I will see you next time.